I'm Chris Brown, a professor at Worcester Polytechnic Institute, where I direct the Surface Metrology Lab. And for the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about roughness analysis. Roughness analysis is part of surface metrology. In surface metrology, we consider how a surface is created or manufactured and how the surface behaves. In order to study this, we measure and analyze the surface geometry or texture. What we're looking for is to see if we can tell surfaces apart that may have been created differently or behave differently, and to find functional correlations with surface creation parameters, such as we might have in machining or grinding or even corrosion or wear, and with surface behavior on the other hand, things like adhesion or uh, friction. One of the things that makes this interesting and challenging is that is that at the fine scales that are most often important in determining the behavior of the surface, the geometry tends to be chaotic so that it is difficult to characterize by conventional Euclidean geometry. So the finest scales in geometry are what we call the roughness. The largest scales are the form and intermediate scales are the waviness. Texture is the combination of the roughness, waviness, and lay, or anisotropy, or directionality in a surface, according to ASME ANSI B46.1, which is the US standard about surface roughness. When we're talking about form, we're talking about the large scale shape of the piece. In this case, if we're considering this surface, it's on a shaft, perhaps for some bearing application, and the form is cylindric and it has a diameter of, 50, of about 50 millimeters. If we go in and measure the texture, as we've done here with a confocal laser uh, microscope, uh, we're looking at much finer scales. Here the, the total field of measurement is about 250 by 250 micrometers. So we're looking at the height z as a function of position in x and y. And it's, uh, it's portrayed here in different shades of blue. And across this, we have intersected it with a plane so we can talk about a profile. The first kind of profile we would consider would be the measured profile, which includes now both the waviness and the roughness. In order to extract the waviness, we need some kind of filter. The filter then produces a waviness form that looks at the larger scale deviations that are present in the profile. So here is an example of the waviness. If we use a different kind of filter or a different wavelength, we would have a different form here or a different character to the waviness. After the waviness is removed, we then have the roughness. So the fine scale geometry is what we call the roughness. Now the most common characterizations for roughness profiles are the height parameters. The most widely used is the average roughness, RA. This has also been referred to as CLA for centerline average, or AA for arithmetic average. Often, quite commonly, we see RQ, or sigma, or sometimes it's called RMS, which is really a, a measure of the standard deviation um, of the roughness. And this is the root mean square roughness. Additionally, quite commonly, we see different measures of peak to valley roughness. RT, which is the peak to valley for the entire profile, or RZ, which is an average over different sampling intervals or segments of the profile. One of the things we need to consider in surface roughness analysis is are the characterization parameters able to capture the essence of the roughness that's responsible for the behavior and is indicative of the process that formed the roughness? If it is, then we'll be able to do a good job with discrimination and correlation. 
But often these height parameters are inadequate for this task. There are many behaviors that we uh, suspect or have shown are related to roughness. Scattering off a surface, adhesive strength, wetting behavior, wear, friction, corrosion, and others. In not all of these cases do we have good experimental evidence that they are related to roughness, although we strongly suspect that they are. One of the reasons, perhaps, why we haven't been able to establish these correlations has been because of inadequacies in the roughness analysis. On the other side of the roughness correlation or discrimination, is the process. So as we machine or grind or lap or hone a surface to impart a cer certain super finish, um, surface finish, um, there we also need to have correlations with the different process variables so that we can produce the surfaces that we want. So roughness analysis, quite simply, is the characterization of the finest scales in the geometry, topography, or texture of a surface. Now, the objective of the roughness analysis is one, to provide support for fundamental research where we have not yet established the correlations between the roughness and the behavior. If we know these correlations, then we can support product design. So if we can draw some sort of curve like this, where we look at some measure of performance versus roughness and can deduce some behavior like this, then we can optimize the, uh, the performance of the surface by varying the roughness. Historically, we don't have many of these curves to work with, and the roughness is often specified based on uh, the previous successes, and if the previous product worked, then we often stick with that kind of surface roughness. However, sometimes the quality or the, the essence of the surface roughness can vary if the process varies. Sometimes subtly, even if we just use a different machine, we can end up with a different kind of character to the roughness. And the roughness analysis need, may need to be fairly sophisticated in order to detect this kind of change. But if we could do this kind of product design, then we could better optimize the surface uh, roughness. Now, in order to produce that surface, we also need correlations between the roughness and the process. So here we're looking to support process design and then be able to do quality assurance and process control. In a surface metrology system, we start with the surface or the replica. Then we use some kind of measurement device, and there's many different devices now, many of them that have recently become available for making detailed measurements of the surface texture or, or, uh, or topography. The uh, characterization analysis sometimes is included in the measurement device and can be uh, uh, performed by a software after the measurement. The result of the characterization analysis, then, are characterization parameters to support different uh, work in advancing the science of surfaces, supporting the product and process design, as we've just discussed, quality assurance, and process control. Now, these characterization parameters, in order to be successful at doing these things, need to be capable of discrimination and correlation. One thought about surface uh, uh, roughness and how to better find correlations with process and performance and to better be able to discriminate is to understand the role that scales play in surface metrology. When the surface is created, as by grinding or honing or wear or corrosion, there are certain scales of interaction that are uh, active in creating or manufacturing the surface, and these are imparted into the surface texture. 
when we go to use the surface for some application, then there are interactions with the flow over the surface or with the wetting or the adhesion. And these are at some other scales, the behavior scales. Now when we measure the surface in order to better understand how the surface is performing and how it's created, the measurement instrument interacts at certain scales. And these scales are imparted in the measured texture. When we go to analyze the measured texture, and the measured texture can contain thousands to even millions of elevations, uh, often there are scales inherent in the analysis. And so the texture characterization then has uh, scales in it from the measurement and or is limited by scales that are available in the measurement and can be limited by scales that are included in the analysis. So when we go to find the correlations then between the texture characterization and the behavior or the texture characterization and the creation, if the scales that were responsible for creating the surface have not survived the measurement and the analysis, it will be difficult to make this correlation between the texture characterization and the, uh, and the characterization of the uh, manufacture or creation of the surface. By the same token, if the scales that are responsible for the behavior uh, are not preserved in the measurement and in the analysis, then it's going to be difficult to make, character, uh, make correlations uh, with the behavior or to discriminate surfaces that behave differently. So keeping track of the scales that are available in the measurement and the scales that survive the analysis can be one way of supporting um, the uh, uh, roughness analysis that uh, will be capable of discrimination and functional correlation. There have been important recent advances in measurement capabilities and in analysis. And there are opportunities available for companies who can take advantage of these advances, better understand surface roughness, and apply this understanding to solving product and design problems and improve quality assurance. I'd like to acknowledge the support of Olympus, uh, makers of uh, the LEXT OLS 4000 uh, measuring laser confocal microscope. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the support of Digital Surf, providers of uh, mountains analysis software, and Sufina, uh, makers of uh, super finishing and grinding machines. Thank you very much for your attention.